Now let's look at the balanced growth path if we see an increase in overall population, which is denoted by n bar, right? So remember, n bar is total population. And so when we're looking at our growth paths, which we've seen in a few videos before, we're looking over time and we're trying to figure out how that y each time period is changing. Where is it, where is it going to? So let's say that there's an increase in population at, uh, let's just call this time period zero. We'll pick it somewhere here in the middle, time period equals zero. And let's try and make a dotted line as straight as possible just so we can uh, see what happens before this change and after this change. A few things we wanna make sure we, we remember, right? We know that the growth rate of y is going to equal one over one minus beta times the growth rate of A, plus we're also going to see uh, beta, the growth rate of, of K. Now in steady state, right? So when we're in steady state, we know that this is going to equal zero. So we're just gonna see one over one minus beta times the growth rate of A. And we know the growth rate of A, and this is all in the readings and whatnot, and if you're uh, unsure, you can always uh, shoot me an email or a message. And the growth rate of A is chi times alpha times n bar. So just as a review, chi is the uh, productivity of these individuals that are being sent towards producing ideas or the individuals who are engaging in research and development. Alpha is the percentage of the total population that is going into um, engaging with that research and development and producing those ideas. And N, like we said here, is our total population. So what we want to do is we want to see what happens before the change and after the change. So let's assume that before the change, we are at some sort of steady state. So let's just go ahead and draw a straight line, looking something like this. And so up to that point, what we know is we know that we were at uh, one over one minus beta times uh, some growth rate in A. So we were at a steady state uh, beforehand. And if there was no change, we know that we would just grow something like this. We'll be a straight growth path, a balanced growth path. We still see this as positive, right? We're in the Romer model, which means we can see sustained economic growth because, right, we have endogenous growth going on. All of the, the technology has its own, uh, has its own production function. So now what happens? What happens when N bar increases. Well, at first, when n bar increases, think of what y is, right? y is going to be the overall production that's going on divided by that total population. Well, if n bar goes up, then y over n is going to go down, which tells me that initially we're going to have an initial drop of my output per person. So we're gonna see an initial drop right here. And that should make sense. If we have a bunch of people that just get dropped into a society, the output per person, right? The output per person has to go down at the beginning. But what do we know is gonna happen eventually? Well, eventually, right, we see it right here, it's gonna be positively correlated, assuming, right, the growth of A is gonna be positive, positive, assuming that nothing else changes. So if we if we bring in a certain number of people, the same number of uh, individuals are going towards research and development and their productivity is staying the same. So this is holding all else constant. So I know that eventually, right, we know eventually, we're gonna have to get again to some sort of higher growth path. Eventually, we're going to see our Y look something like this, where we'll have a different one over one minus beta times the growth rate of A prime, where this is new with, with, the, with N increasing. But again, the interesting part, like we did the last video, the interesting part is what happens between here and here. So we saw in a previous video, we saw that it was uh, con, uh, convex and that took a while to get there. So let's think about this with the increase in N. So if N bar goes up, holding all its constant, that means that both LP and LA are both increasing. So what does that tell us about our capital? Because remember up here, right, the growth of Y is influenced by both the growth of capital and the growth of A when we're in this convergence period in the middle. Well, 
little k is actually going to go down, right? Remember, little k is big K over L sub P. And so if L sub P is going up, little k is going down. So we're going to increase k towards the, the k star, right? Because it's gonna because if we see it, uh, if we see it going down, if we see capital labor ratio going down, it's going to converge back up to it. So now we have positive growth on the K side and positive growth on the A side. So we're going to see a very fast move towards this. So what we see is we see this convex shape starting from this, and it's going to quickly move back up to the new steady state. So this is a curved line in the convergence area because not only do we see an increase in my growth of A, but we see capital start to push up as well, which is pushing Y up even faster. So you'll notice this is a le little different from when we saw the change in the proportion of population going towards research and development. That one took a convex approach, and it took a while to get there because my change in capital was pulling it down. Here, like I said, both of the growth of A and growth of K are both a positive influence on the overall growth of Y. That's why we see it grow fast, and it gets to that new steady state much faster.